Hey everybody, how's it going? Corona, Rob here. I just got back from the movie theater, and as I have done several times on this channel, some of you may know this, I decided to come home and immediately do a review of the movie I just saw. Just everything fresh in my head, just saw the movie. Uh, and of course, the movie, as you guys see by the title, is Godzilla, King of the Monsters. So anyway, <laughs> uh, yeah, so it was Godzilla, King of the Monsters, which of course is the sequel to the 2014 Godzilla and also the third film in the monsterverse I guess the legendary monsterverse and the second is the Kong is Kong Skull Island which I have yet to see I should go see that but this was the first movie really that starts introducing all of the kaiju in the Godzilla universe or some more of the kaiju anyway and of course in this movie we have none other than Godzilla himself but we also have Mothra, Rodan, and King Ghidra, or Ghidorah, as uh, us Westerners may know him as. Uh, and so, I just went with Rachel to my local theater and we saw it. And um, I should say, before I start reviewing this movie, what, what my perspective is. Uh, much like I did in my Detective Pikachu review, I... Um, you know, gave a prerequisite with it where, you know, I'm a big fan of Pokemon and so that kind of shaped how I looked at the movie. But with Godzilla, it's a little different. I'm a fan, I think, now, or becoming a fan, but it's a more recent thing. Uh, for many, many years, the only movie I had ever seen, the only Godzilla, truly... Well, actually, I can't really say that unequivocally. Let, let, let's, let's, let's start this again. Um, for years, the only Godzilla that I, movie that I recall really watching and having an impact on me was the 1998 one, which I know most Godzilla fans hate. But I do remember when I was a kid watching Godzilla movies with my dad um, when I was really, really, really young. But I couldn't even tell you which of those movies they were. I know they were, they had to be some of the original movies, the Showa period Godzilla movies, but they're very faint in my mind. And um, like I do remember watching several movies, but I forget, you know, I've seen... Uh, some of those movies now and I, I couldn't tell you which ones I had seen off the top of my head. So for me, you know, Godzilla was like, it was something that I certainly, I kind of have a weird tiny bit of nostalgia for because, because it makes me think of watching those movies when I was a kid with my dad, but they didn't have an impact on me as a kid, like something like Star Wars did or Jurassic Park did, you know, I never was a huge Godzilla fan. Now, both because of this mute movie and uh, watching, honestly, James Rolfe, also known as the Angry Video Game Nerd, he's a huge Godzilla fan, and I watched some of his recent videos about the Godzilla movies, and I've seen some other things about it. I decided, honestly, that I would try to finally like dip my toes into this <laughs> this little the corner of nerdum that I have yet to really uh, explore, and that's, of course, obviously, the Godzilla universe. So what I've been doing is I've been watching every... I've set out on a quest over the last couple, about month and a half now, to watch every single Godzilla movie, of which there's like over 30 of them, I guess, and I want to do it chronologically. So right now I'm about halfway through the Showa period, so I just actually, before I went and saw this movie, I went and, or I actually watched the original Destroy All Monsters, so I've seen the first, I think that's the seventh or eighth movie, I forget, so I've seen basically every Showa period Godzilla movie up from the original to <clears throat> Destroy All Monsters. And then, of course, I've seen the 1998 Godzilla with Matthew Broderick, and, yeah, we, we know that about that film. And I've seen the 2014 film, uh, just Godzilla, the self-titled 2014 film. So that being said, I mean, I've watched probably close to 10 Godzilla movies, and, and somebody who's not a fan of the series might say, well, boy, that's a lot of Godzilla movies. That's not even close to all of them. There's the, I still haven't... I haven't seen any of the Heisei or the Millennium Period movies or any of the newer Toho movies. So <clears throat> my God, my Godzilla knowledge is not as vast as it could be, but I'm also not a novice either. I've now seen quite a few of the, um, the Godzilla movies, and I am familiar with most of the classic kaiju monsters. So that being said, I just want you guys to know where my mind is reviewing this movie and also just to let you guys know that I'm not a noob when it comes to Godzilla either, you know, I've, I've, I at least am familiar with all the monsters, and, um, I have recently been watching, or, you know, watching my way through the Showa 
period. And once I'm done with that, I plan on moving the Heisei period. And I just I want to watch all of it. So, so just a little prerequisite for you. But as far as uh, Godzilla King of the Monsters, um, my overall thoughts, just right off the bat, I really enjoyed it. Um, I don't think it's by any means my favorite Godzilla movie. Uh, as far as I can say, from what I've watched, my favorite is the original 1954 film. But I really, really enjoyed this. And I would also say that I it was way better than both the 2014 Godzilla and definitely way better than the 1998 Godzilla. In fact, I guess I could honestly say it's probably the best American Godzilla film, in my opinion. Um, because really there's just those three movies to go off of. And then, of course, we have Kong, uh, King Kong vs. Godzilla next year. But as of right now, this is, I think, probably my favorite American Godzilla film. And I really, really enjoyed it. Um... Going in, in terms of the the plot, I actually felt it was pretty part of the course for a Godzilla film. Um, they did, you know, it was nice that they kept a lot of the elements of what makes Godzilla Godzilla and what makes the kaiju the kaiju. Um, they kept the core of that, but they kind of did something a little different with it. And of course, like the themes that are common with Godzilla, with, you know, Godzilla being a force and the monsters being a force and the monsters you know, fighting each other and Godzilla being the good versus the evil King Ghidorah um, was, of course, very present. And, um, you know, there was a lot of throwbacks to a lot of older movies with Mothra being, um, you know, just a lot of Mothra's backstory was actually thrown into this. Surprisingly, I was kind of surprised how much of it was in there. I'm trying to keep this somewhat spoiler-free, um, but I, I guess from now on I'll put a little, you know, um, disclaimer right here that I may get into spoiler territory, so just a warning, just in case anybody, um, you know, wants to avoid spoilers, but I'll try to keep it, like, mild, you know, not anything major, I won't reveal any, like, major plot stuff, but my possible mild spoilers here, but, uh, so with <clears throat> Mothra, they showed, like, Mothra being hatched and everything, and, you know, they showed the mar uh, Mothra lar larva, and then Marth Mothra basically, you know, becoming Mothra, which was pretty good, and, uh, you really felt with Mothra, there was a very, there was a mysticism to, um, the, to the creature, like how there was in, you know, some of the original Toho movies, particularly I'm thinking of, I haven't seen the original Mothra, but I saw Godzilla vs. Mothra, and there is a mysticism to that creature, which, uh, I think they captured in this movie, and I really like that. Rodan was really cool, I thought, I really, really liked what they did ro with Rodan, actually, um, he looked awesome, um, and I think he really was pretty true to his character, although I've got a slight complaint about that, but, you know, I'll, I'll get into that. King Ghidra, they did a fantastic job. I thought King Ghidra looked awesome. There were some of my favorite shots in the entire movie were uh, involving King Ghidra. There's a, particularly some great cinematography with it. There's one with King Ghidra coming out of a volcano with his wings spread and there's like a cross in the foreground and it's there's like just lava everywhere it was fantastic it's a really really it was a really really cool shot and they also had another uh shot with king Ghidra where he basically um he eats he basically like bites into like a, a huge like power source or power line and then like electricity is just emanating from him and his wings are spread out it's fantastic it's it's really 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 good so um, yeah, I don't know, uh, I, I thought, uh, King Ghidra, Mothra, and, uh, Rodan looked great, and of course, Godzilla, I mean, we saw Godzilla in the 2014 movie, but he looked fantastic in this, in, um, in this film, I thought, they really, I think, um, I, th I mean, he didn't look like, this is the original 1954 Godzilla, he didn't necessarily, he didn't obviously look exactly like that, but I thought that they gave him a very cool modern day look and while at the same time staying relatively true to the original design of Godzilla which I thought was I thought they did it really tastefully I think I thought obviously Godzilla looked really really great particularly when he was using his atomic breath and uh, his uh, little spikes there or whatever you call them the scales would turn blue that was really cool and uh, his roar sounded almost exactly like the original Godzilla roar. I was really impressed. I was also, I was really impressed overall with the, um, both the music and the sound overall with the movie. They had a few tracks that were 
basically redone versions of original um, music from the original film and some of the other ones, which was really nice to hear. It made it like having that, having those themes from those old movies really made it feel like a Godzilla movie, which was great. I really felt this movie probably felt more like a Godzilla movie than the its predecessor and of course the 1998 film. Um, it, it was really nice. You really felt like you know it was. It it was cert- it felt like a Godzilla movie, which was nice. It should because it, it, it is a Godzilla movie, but for some reason they've had issues with that in the past. Uh, even with the 2014 uh, film, a little bit, and I I think um I think the music really helped um make it feel more like a classic Godzilla film. Uh, of course, the the scenes with all the kaiju were just fantastic. Uh, I really loved all the fights. You know um. There, you know, obviously all the stuff with Godzilla and King Ghidra and, you know, Rodan. There was some stuff with Rodan fighting Ghidra and fighting another kaiju, which I won't say. Um, and there was, of course, there like Mothra did a little fighting and stuff. It was, it was really, really fantastic. And there were some other kaiju in the film that were, I that as far as I could see, just upon research, are all unique to this film. So they, it seems like they're new creations. Which I'm okay with, but I really hope if in the future they do plan on using some of these. Like, there's some woolly mammoth one, which I don't know the name of. There's another giant one. There's um, an, uh, one of those creatures from the first, the 2014 film. I can't, I can't remember right off the top of my head right now what they are. Um, but uh, they had one of those just briefly in the film, uh, which I didn't really care for. The... the uh, the Muto, the Muto, that's what they're called, the Muto. So they had one of the one of those in there, which was alright. I mean, it w- wasn't for very long anyway. They had a few small little nods to Kong Skull Island, obviously referencing, you know, hinting at uh, at you know King Kong and you know Godzilla, obviously, you know, facing off in the next film. So that was kind of cool. Um, but as far as the new kaiju go, they were I th- I like the woolly mammoth. The woolly mammoth is a cool idea, but I just hope these new kaiju are additions and they don't leave out potential really cool kaiju they could bring back like mecha godzilla like um like uh angiris like um they have a new spider creature which i looked it up and is not the same as the spider creature from the original show period which really sucks so i hope they bring that back um and yeah so there's a couple other ones that i would also like to see hopefully we will see um Minus, you know, uh, <laughs> minus Godzilla Jr., Godzilla's son. I don't think we need that to come back. But uh, um, I, I would like to see at least, you know, Anguirus and a few other uh, kaiju from the original. And uh, from I think some of these even pop up in the later Godzilla films as well. So as long as these kaiju don't, like, replace some of these other ones, I'm, I'm okay with it. As long as they're an addition to it. It's kind of cool they made their own monsters you know like i said i like the woolly mammoth so we'll we'll see how it pans out in future films and future monster verse films but you know it, I, it remains to be seen but i think it was a good idea if that they focused on if they were going to bring back more monsters you know more original monsters from the toho films that they went with king ghidra mothra and rodan those are probably the three most iconic aside from godzilla himself so uh, i thought i I thought they did it tastefully and they did a really good job with it. As far as the overall plot of the movie, I thought it was pretty good. Um, I did like it was. I actually think it deserves credit because it was better than the 2014 Godzilla movie, in my opinion. Uh, the beginning of the 2014 Godzilla movie is great, especially all the stuff with Brian Cranston, and then it kind of dries up in the middle. And then at the end, I mean, the story doesn't really matter in the, at the end of the movie too much because it's mostly just Godzilla fighting, but. In this one, I felt like they did a bit better of a job. Um, you could really feel as in most... It, it kind of had a sort of throwback feel to those Godzilla movies where it was kind of like the military and scientists trying to figure out what they can do to stop the monsters and basically not really be, <laughs> being able to do much to stop the monsters and then fi- kind of realizing that their role isn't really so much as like they're the main people they're you know they're the main force to stop or whatever um to stop the monsters or whatever but they kind of more play the sidelines you know they kind of figure that out which is good 
Uh, the main characters, it revolves around like a family, and there's also um, uh, the scientist from the um, organi organization Monarch. He's the only character actually that returns um, from the two four two, 2014 Godzilla movie. Uh, I think it's Dr. Kawas uh, Kawasawa or something like that. I don't have it quite right, but the Asian guy who was in the 2014 movie who was the doctor, uh, he's the head of the Monarch um, branch, I guess, that is basically studying these these creatures and they find them all over anyway. I don't want to give away the whole plot, but you know, he's one of the main characters and then you have like a basically a father, a mother, and a daughter who are the main characters. And uh, they're far more interesting than the family from 2014, I have to say. <laughs> Uh, they were kind of cool. The The mother character was really interesting. Um, she does some pretty weird stuff. There's kind of like a twist with her. Um, there's Charles Dances in it, also known as Tywin Lannister from the Game of Thrones. And he was just kind of there. I felt like his character was slightly bland. He didn't really add much to the plot, in my opinion. I think there's going to be stuff with him in the future. Um, possibly, I don't know, but um, I didn't like his character felt it just felt like oh there's tywin lannister just standing there you know i mean it's charles dance you know but um you know it, he i didn't, didn't think his character added much to the plot so i mean he was all right but you know he wasn't you know he, he's he was awesome just because he's him not really necessarily his character was all that unique and there were some other characters there was another kind of scientist guy that had a lot of funny one-liners there um but for the most part the the plot wasn't like it didn't blow me away, but it wasn't bad either. You know, it was it, it was it was engaging enough where like when the monsters weren't on screen, you know, you were into it enough. But I think overall, really, it, it was great. Like th this film, I think its strength versus the twenty fourteen Godzilla, because I know in t the twenty fourteen Godzilla they basically tried to hide Godzilla until more the end of the film, so you know he would by the time he was real, it's like, oh my god, you know, the whole film, we've been building up to Godzilla, and there he is, but they didn't show enough of him, I felt, uh, and there wasn't enough monster action in the 2014 Godzilla, but there is that in spades in this movie. Obviously, they realized where they went wrong with that, the mistake they made, and there is it, it like, like, there's tons and tons of action between the monsters. Um, it's awesome. Uh, I thought the special effects looked great. Uh, it's pretty much all CGI, but I didn't think it looked too cheesy at all. I thought it looked really nice. Um, there were some particular scenes, particularly with Mothra, where you could feel... Mothra felt like like you, you could feel the mysticism, you know, when Mothra when Mothra's presence was on screen. It, it was really well done, and the fiery, you know, uh, -ness, the fire and the... the um, the uh, sort of medieval feel of Rodan and... Uh, you know the um and just the power and and awe of king ghidra and godzilla when they were on screen it was it was just fantastic you know i enjoyed watching the the monster fights they were great um uh and yeah i don't know all of the stuff with like i said all the stuff with the kaiju like all the monsters fighting stuff was just top notch it was great um they also took a different turn with um the lore a little bit of the monsters themselves which i thought was interesting now i have to again say so please i i don't want to you know say this unequivocally but i again have watched half of the show of film so i don't know what some of the plots for some of the other movies are but i thought it was an interesting premise if it is unique about how sort of all of the monsters kind of have a symbiotic relationship um and they kind of tried to without spoiling too much they kind of tried to be faithful to sort of like the backstory of the monsters while also trying to make it make sense of all of it, which I thought was really good. Like, for example, King Ghidra is still from outer space. He's still not of this world. And the lore behind the monsters um, is faithful to that, you know? And there was stuff with Mothra that was kind of faithful to the material, but also different where it's like, you know, they call her the queen of the monsters, you know, which you know, kind of talking about, like, her and Godzilla have a, having a symbiotic relationship, which I thought was, like, I was okay with it, and also kind of like, eh, I don't know if I like some of that, you know. So some of that lore that they, like, I like what they were trying to do, uh, but I didn't like all of it. Uh, it was still, I still appreciate, I thought they did a decent job with it. So um, we'll see how that's fleshed out in further films in the MonsterVerse, depending on how many more movies they plan on making. I don't know. But, um, 
Yeah, they, uh, I thought the backstory of the monster was really good. Maybe that's something I could kind of comment on later after I've seen more of the other Godzilla films. Um, cause I feel like I can't say too much on it, but, um, you know, if you want to get a more in-depth analysis, check out the nerds, uh, also known, you know, at his review, I plan on watching this, that after this, because, um, I don't want to be influenced by his review on my review. So, um, but yeah, I, I plan on watching that to see what he has to say. Cause he's a huge, massive Godzilla fan. But, uh, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know what else to really, really to say. I, I liked, uh, like I said, I love the special effects. The action was great. I love the music. I love the sound. The plot was decent. And, uh, I think it really is probably the best American Godzilla film. And I look forward to seeing, uh, Godzilla vs. King Kong and some of the other movies in the, uh, Monsterverse, um, that are going to be released. And I should probably see Kong Skull Island at some point, but you know, I could see that whenever, I guess. Um, but yeah, I don't know. As far as an overall ranking for the movie, I'd give it like, um, compared to other Godzilla movies I've seen too, I'd give it a, um, I think I'll give it like an 8 out of 10. I thought it was pretty decent, you know? I think I, I think an 8 out of 10 is fair. Uh, it didn't like blow me away, blow me away, but I was very entertained and I thought it was a great movie. So yeah, I think an 8 out of 10 is a fair rank. Um, I think there's a couple things that they could improve on. Oh, I should say, I don't know if I said this specifically, but there was a lot of throwbacks in this movie that I think longtime fans of the series are really going to like, especially to the very first movie. And there's a big scene that happens. Uh, I won't spoil it, but it's a, it's basically, there's going to there's gonna be a scene with Rodan and King Ghidra, and there's something that happens on that scene that is a, that is a total throwback to a major plot point in the very first Godzilla movie. And that's all I'll say, but I really appreciated that. I thought that was really cool. A neat nod to the original film. The music was a really neat nod to the original film. There was quite a few nods to the original film. In fact, if you pay attention, if you, I highly actually, I kind of wish I had done this. I highly recommend watching the original 1954 Japanese version of the film and then going to see this movie and see how many things you can point out because there was actually some really awesome nods to the original, which I thought was fantastic that was that that was another big plus uh that i should say for for this movie um I, it's nice that it honors the legacy of the original so i i really enjoyed that so anyway that's my thoughts on godzilla king of the monsters i highly recommend going to see it if you're a godzilla fan or if you're not and you just want to see a cool action movie uh with a lot of monsters fighting and a lot of destruction and stuff uh and like i said i give it about an 8 out of 10 and uh i'm really enjoying dipping my toes into this whole Godzilla universe and monster universe in the world of Toho. And I like that um, the U.S. is finally doing, starting to do Godzilla right. And hopefully the monster, the rest of the monsterverse ends up being really good. But at the very least, even if the rest of it sucks, I think this is a really, really great film. So go ahead and see it. I hope you guys enjoy it. And I hope you guys enjoyed this review. I will hopefully see you guys again. I don't know what movie I'll review next time. Probably just next time I go to the movies. But anyway, I'm at the rambling point. I will see you guys soon. Peace. And also, it's Godzilla!